Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to use Python's poetry to create a web API using Fast API and SQL model to connect to a, to a Postgres SQL database. SQL model is an extension of SQL Alchemy and nicely pairs with Fast API in order to export our models over a RESTful service. So as we start out, we're going to go ahead and assume that you've installed Poetry uh, per our last discussion, at which time we can go Poetry, New. Um, the database that we're using on the back end is the Chinook database. We'll explain, we'll actually show you how to download that. So we'll go Poetry New, and we're going to call this one Chinook API. You see that it automatically creates that. So we're going to go into the Chinook API. And if we do an LS, we can see that several directories have been created. So we've got the Chinook API directory and tests. Those are both Python modules. Um, then we have our, our, our project descriptor and a readme. With that, we're going to start this session out by going ahead and downloading the Chinook database. Here you can see we're using wget uh, to download the GitHub asset. So we'll go ahead and download that first do an ls and you can see that it, it put the database SQL file here. Um, we will use PSQL from the command line. So PSQL, uh, we'll use our Postgres user and we're going to read in the Chinook database to create it. You should have your Postgres password from when you set up your Postgres database in our last session. Now that you have that, We've imported the data. You can see that several rows have inserted here. Um, once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and log into PSQL, uh, the server specifically. So we'll go ahead and do that as Postgres one more time. And once we're in there, what we're going to do is we're going to create a role. So we're going to create a role called Chinook uh, that can log in it's no super user, no create DB, no create role, um, inherits from its parent role, no replication, um, no pass, uh, no, no bypassing the roles and it can connect. So we are also limiting its connections to 20 in the off chance that we, we accidentally uh, mess up our database. pool. So we're going to go ahead and create that user. You can see that they've, cre they've been created. Um, then we're going to grant that user the privilege to the Chinook database that we just imported. So we'll go grant all privileges on database Chinook to Chinook. Oh, and of course. So we'll do that. We'll finish up that grant. Um, once we've done that grant, we need to change our database over to Chinook. So that's backslash C Chinook or connect to the Chinook database. And then we're going to grant all privileges on all tables in the schema public to the Chinook user. Um, and when that, once that grant's done, the Chinook user should be able to connect and read data from the database. This is important because as we develop APIs, we don't want APIs connecting to our databases as super users. We want them to have a limited access to what they want to do with a, with a specific database. So now we're going to quit SQL and we're going to log in one more time. But this time as the Chinook user um, and to the Chinook database. And use the Chinook password that we set up. Uh, you'll see that you've connected. If you do a dash, a backslash DT to list your tables, you'll see that you have access to read the tables. And then we can do a select count from artist, which is the table we'll be working with today. And we see that we have 275 rows in artist. Excellent. So now my user is capable of talking to the table, but he's also capable of logging into the database. And this is important as we go through the next steps. Okay, so now at this point in time, my database is completely set up. And now I want to go in and I actually want to open Visual Studio Code. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and finish setting up my project um, and I'm going to delete that Chinook file. So RM Chinook Postgres, I don't need to keep that around. I now have that gone. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask Poetry 
to add a couple of dependencies to my project. So first off, we're going to add fast API. And then I'm going to go ahead and go poetry add SQL model. And then lastly, we're going to do uh, psycho PG, which is PSY COPG. And that's our that's our database driver. So right now I haven't done anything else in poetry. I'm not in the poetry shell, etc. cetera. Um, but what I can do now is I can actually go poetry shell and that's going to start up my virtual environment. And the way that I have my Z shell set up is you can see the virtual environment over here and what type of virtual environment it is. So now I can actually look at and run everything as if I was just in the in this virtual environment, all of my drivers are there, etc. So we'll start VS code in this directory. Oh. And as we start that, let's resize the window for all to see it. You can see that we have all of our files over here. Um, our modules are set up with the init.py. And of course, I have my project file. If I open a terminal now with Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to say don't show again. What it's done is it's auto detected the fact that I'm in a Chinook. I've got poetry installed and it auto detected the environment. So it's using the virtual environment right away. This is great. Fairly easy to set up, but now it's time to write some code. So what we're going to do is we'll jump over here into the Chinook API side. We're going to create a new file called main.python. Um, and we're going to create another new file called model.py. In main.py, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a couple of imports and test that we can actually create our API with the libraries that we had. So we'll go from typing import uh, list and from fast API import fast API. We'll create an application with app equals new fast API. And then we're going to go ahead and use an annotation. And we're going to tell it that we want to create a get for our API at the slash root of our folder. So and then we're going to call this one def read root. And it will just return a simple object, which is a dictionary object with a message. Greetings from Woodstock Developer Group. Okay, at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and we will go ahead and start this with using poetry run fast API in dev mode using Chinook API main. We'll hit enter and we can see from our login side here that we actually started a server running on port 8000. Now we'll jump over into our browser and go to localhost 8000 slash docs. We saw that in the other side and we can see that it created a swagger UI for us that allows us to execute the endpoint that we just created. So we'll go ahead and try it out, hit execute. And here we can see that the message creating from Woodstock's Woodstock Developer Group. Excellent. Now, at this point in time, we want to go ahead and say, how do I connect to my database and how do I create as little code as possible to represent the tables in my database? In this scenario, what we'll do is jump back over to Visual Studio Code and we're going to jump in the model side first. From the model side, we're going to add a few imports. We'll say from typing import optional and from SQL model import SQL model and field. SQL model and field is, is the base object that we'll be extending and field is a way for us to define how our object relates to a field in the database. So now we're going to go ahead and create the class artist and artist is going to extend SQL model and it is a table in the database. Once we have that defined, 
Normally, SQL al Alchemy uses plurals to describe its tables. The Chinook database that we just imported only created its databases in singular. So instead of being artists as a table, it is artist. And we can check that over here by connecting to our server and looking at the tables. So here you actually see the table name is artist. And it gives us the artist ID and the name are the two fields that we want to uh, integrate into our Python model. So artist ID is the primary key and it becomes an optional integer type because it may or may not be defined because we have auto fields or sequences that we can use. And then we're going to let SQL Alchemy know that it's a field type, its default is none, and it is a primary key, so that is true. And then we have the name field that we just saw. Uh, name is a string, and that's all we have to do to define the artist table using the SQL model. Now we'll jump back over to the main side, and in main, we're going to do a little bit of work for connecting to the database. Here we'll have to add some more imports. So we'll say from SQL Alchemy, uh, import create engine and select. And then from SQL Alchemy.orm, we'll go ahead and import the session object. A session is a way for us to have each request coming into our API use a distinct connection to the database so that it doesn't trample over other connections or other sessions. And then, of course, from the model side, we'll need to go from import uh, model. So we'll use a relative import here and we'll use the artist to import them. Now we'll create our new addition apt.get and we'll call this one slash artists. Def read artists. And now we'll go ahead, at this point in time, we can create a new session. So session equals session, and we're going to use the engine, which we have not defined yet. We'll define that in just one moment. A statement of what we want to do, which is this is equivalent to your SQL statement. So we're going to select, and because this is an object relational model, we're going to just select the artist. Lastly, we're going to create a response type which will be a list of artists. We'll read all of the artists from the database. So for each artist in session.scalar, so this tells me that I'm, I'm pulling back a list of scalar objects from my statement that, I, that we created above. Then we're gonna go response.append artist. and return response. So in a type friendly manner, we will tell the engine that we want to respond with a list of artists. And then we're going to do our connection to our database last here, which is engine equals create engine. This is the what we just imported above here. And then from that, we're going to use our connection string which is Postgres plus uh, PsychoPG. This is the driver instance, and this is the URL to the driver using the username, the password, the host, the port, and then the database that we want to connect to. Now, if I go ahead and save this, what happens down here is we've restarted our server. And now that I fixed my typo where I failed to initialize my array, we can jump back over here, hit execute one more time, and see that we get a list of artists coming back. So today we went through exactly what we said. We said we would use poetry to create a web API. We did that. We connected to our web API in our, in our Postgres database via the create engine using Alchemy and the database string to connect to. We created a model object that references the table in our data set. And then we can select against that model using the function select and telling it the type of object that we want to get back. From that, it automatically responds with an artist type that can be used with FastAPI to generate 
not just the model, but also the definition in the model. So as we go back over here, we'll go ahead and minimize that. And now what you see is because we had that last set in, it actually talks about all of the schemas that we're exporting. So fast API is a great way to create an API quickly to experiment with. It has a ton of features for security, etc. I highly recommend using this stack or this stack with um, whether it's a, a NoSQL database or some other type of database that you may need, need to use in order to access and, and bring a good experience to your web development. I hope this was useful. Thank you. Have a great day.